You may have seen the headlines. Study Medicare for All projected to cost $32.6 trillion, said ABC News. CBS News elaborated. Study Medicare for All plan touted by Bernie Sanders would cost $32.6 trillion. Medicare for All, a federally funded universal health care plan championed by Senator Bernie Sanders and others, has become a key issue for progressive voters evaluating Democratic Party candidates for the 2008 midterms and the 2020 presidential race. The plan would provide coverage for the 40 million currently uninsured in the U.S., a gap that's estimated to cause tens of thousands of deaths annually. But, as Justin Anderson reports for FAIR.org, it has received no shortage of negative coverage in the media, all revolving around a question unasked in other contexts. How are we going to pay for it? It's in this atmosphere that a new study emerges from Charles Blahouse at the libertarian-leaning Mercatus Center at George Mason University. Blahouse's study projected that Sanders' Medicare for All system, assuming it was enacted in 2022, would cost the federal government $32.6 trillion in excess spending over the course of 10 years. And, as noted, it wasn't just conservative media that leapt on that scary-sounding number. But whether at the National Review or Time magazine, the headlines missed a central point in Blahouse's study. In terms of total, federal, state, and private spending on health care, the Medicare for All plan is projected to cost trillions less than projections of spending under the current U.S. health care system. True, a cursory glance at Blahouse's study wouldn't show that. He obscured his own findings by not displaying the 10-year totals for Medicare for all cost savings in his tables. As Matt Brunig, head of the People's Policy Project, pointed out in Jacobin, adding up all the values for Medicare for all savings from 2022 to 2031 in Table 2 of Blahouse's study shows that enacting the plan would save $2.1 trillion in national health expenditures over that period. It's as if Blahouse saw the results of his data and didn't like them, so he just decided not to publicize them in his table. And outlets like Axios followed his lead. The site's write-up contained the following at the bottom of its worth noting section, quote, All told, Medicare for All would actually slightly reduce the total amount we pay for health care, but the plan would increase the share of that cost paid through taxes rather than through insurance premiums or out-of-pocket. Close quote. And there's the rub. Medicare for all would amount to net savings on overall health care spending, besides the evidently ancillary matter of guaranteeing health care coverage for every American. But the Mercatus Center, funded primarily by conservative billionaires Charles and David Koch, and all the publications making a fuss, are much more interested in the conservative boogeyman taxes. In AP's report, Emory professor and former Clinton advisor Kenneth Thorpe notes pointedly, quote, there are going to be a lot of people who will pay more in taxes than they save on premiums, close quote. Those people will certainly be at the top end of the income scale and not the ones currently deciding between going to the doctor and paying the rent. Some publications, largely but not entirely progressive ones, including Common Dreams, Vox, Business Insider, and Vice, did not naively parrot the Marcatus Studies price tag. They pointed out the large cost savings of Medicare for All implicit in the study's findings and the benefits of universal health care coverage from an ethical as well as an economic perspective. But the fact that a single study by a think tank with an anti-tax agenda could so easily frame news coverage on health care shows just how powerful the myth of fiscal responsibility can be.